Welcome to this insole tutorial. In this video we will look at a typical wall construction and compare the measured laboratory transmission loss data with the predicted performance of the same construction modelled in insole. The test report we are using for this tutorial is for a simple wall partition constructed from steel studs with a layer of gypsum board on each side. A link to the report, as well as further information, can be found in the video description below. This is the default state of insul when launched. The green line on the chart on the right displays the predicted transmission loss of the currently modeled construction in one third octave bands. The tables tab, which is located above the insul chart, shows these values under the R column. The columns ref1 and ref2 in the table are where the reference test data from the report is entered. Data can either be entered manually by selecting each cell and typing in the transmission loss value at that frequency, or by copying a range of values to your clipboard, such as from Excel, selecting the cell corresponding to the lowest frequency copied, in this case it is 50 Hz, and selecting paste, or by pressing Ctrl V on your keyboard. Once data has been entered into the table, make sure to select the show checkbox above the column. This will make the reference points appear on the graph over on the chart tab. The entered reference data is represented by the new points in pink. The STC rating for the entered data is calculated and displayed on the graph legend to the right of the chart. Adding another set of data to the other reference column on the table will display a second set of data on the graph. Now that we have entered the test data, we will change the insole model to match the construction. Single, double and triple refer to the number of individual panels each made up of various layers. The construction we want to model consists of two separate panels either side of a single frame, so we will use double. Panel 1 refers to all layers on one side of the frame, while panel 2 refers to everything on the other side. In this case, both panels consist of one layer of 16mm thick Type-X gypsum board. In the products list, simply select any Type-X gypsum material. The thickness doesn't matter. To find a specific material, the products list can be filtered by manufacturer, category of material, or by directly searching with the search bar. With the correct material selected, we can edit the panel thickness by typing 16 into the thickness text box and hitting enter. If there were other materials in the panel, these can be added by repeating the process on the tabs layer 2 to layer 6. If there are multiple layers of the same material, these can be added by increasing the number of value. As both panels of the construction we are modeling are the same, the same process can be repeated for panel 2. Select the right material and edit the thickness. Lastly, the frame tab is where we can edit the properties of the frame. First, we will change the stud type from timber studs to steel. The list of frame types can be refined by selecting a specific frame material, in this case metal. The construction uses 65mm deep single steel studs using 25 gauge steel, so we will select steel studs 0.55mm, as this is roughly the thickness of 25 gauge steel. The frame parameter section allows the dimensions and spacing of the studs to be defined. The stud depth refers to the thickness of each stud perpendicular to each panel. For our construction this is 65mm. To change this, simply type 65 into the stud depth text box. Changing the stud depth will automatically change the cavity width to match, and vice versa. The studs are spaced 16 inches or 406 millimeters apart, so we will enter 406 into the stud spacing box to model this. The absorption section allows the user to edit the properties of any insulation or absorption within the cavity. The number of option in the absorption section refers to the number of layers of absorption. As the test construction does not include any insulation or absorption, we will set the number of value to zero. It is worth noting that absorber thickness cannot be reduced to a value below 10 mm. Now our insole model matches the test laboratory construction and the calculated performance of our model can be compared to the measured results from the test report. The insole calculations have a prediction tolerance of at least 3 decibels. Thank you for watching this insole tutorial. You can find more information on the Insel website using the link in the video description.